Every kit has conditions, certain parameters it needs to meet based on the work that you do. So if you're a professional cinematographer DPing a commercial, then that kit should probably include a wide variety of lighting options and have you covered no matter what unexpectedly happens on set. If you're a concert videographer, that kit should probably include a wide variety of focal lengths and allow you to shoot in low light. For me, there are two conditions. All of my gear needs to be quick to use and fit into a single camera bag. I set those conditions because I mostly make travel videos and a lot of them. So I'll be in a location for maybe five days and have to turn around two or even three 10 minute videos. So I need to capture a lot of footage quickly. And while I'm doing that, I'm constantly moving around between locations and hiking a lot. So hence the, the one bag part. I also want my footage to look good, but I think everyone wants their footage to look good, so I wouldn't really count that as a unique condition. So let's construct a Venn diagram. On one side, we want the footage to look good, and on the other side, we have these unique conditions based on the environment we're working in. When I'm looking for gear, I try to find items that fall right in the middle. One item that I've found falls right in the middle of that Venn diagram for me is the Panasonic Lumix S5, the camera I've been using for the last, I think, two or so years. It's small, lightweight, quick to use, but also gives me a variety of options for footage I can capture and spits out a really nice looking image. Frankly, any mirrorless camera would probably satisfy the conditions I've set. I mean, they're all pretty small and quick to operate, but of all the different options I've used, this one gives me the best results. It has really nice color science and a really nice image, very smooth almost like a cinema camera. If I was using an actual cinema camera, then the results might look even better, but at the expense of the conditions. An actual cinema camera is bulkier to carry around and requires more power and storage to operate. I actually carry around two Lumix S5s. I water damaged one last year, bought a new one, and then a few months ago, it came back to life. So now I have two. I can set up a time lapse on one and keep shooting videos on the other, or a lot of the time I'll put a different lens on each one and just carry them both at the same time. I look a little crazy carrying around two cameras, but it's actually pretty nice not to have to switch lenses between shots. Speaking of lenses, I carry three, the first of which is the Sigma 14 millimeter F1.8. This is my go-to wide angle lens. It's definitely pretty big and heavy, but I think it makes up for it with the F1.8 aperture because I don't have to put away my wide angle lens when it starts to get dark. You also can't put any filters on the front of this lens because of the giant front element. Yeah, it's definitely a compromise, but so far, I think it's worth it for the unique look that it gives me. I also carry a Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4. This is like a nice mid-range focal length, not too wide and not too tight. It's great for shooting like a portrait of a person or getting a close-up of an object. And finally, the Lumix 70 to 200 F2.8. This is my go-to telephoto lens and I use it all the time, particularly for picking out little details in a wide scene. Sometimes you don't have the option to get closer to a subject, especially on like a very run and gun shoot. So being able to reach out with a longer focal length is really handy. With a wide, mid and long option in my camera bag, I have pretty much any shot that I wanna capture covered. Now my Sigma lenses are both Canon mount, so I use a Sigma MC11 adapter to put them on my Panasonic camera. And I also carry around Gobe ND filters for the 35 and the 70 to 200. On top of that camera, I have the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Now this is kind of like the gourmet travel microphone. It's more or less the best audio quality that you can get out of a small all-in-one on-camera microphone. I've also used the smaller, much less expensive Rode Video Micro in the past and found it to be a great budget option if you're just starting out. And again, I could get much better audio quality out of like a professional studio shotgun microphone, but think about how impractical that would be for capturing footage on the fly. All right, so we've got the camera, the lenses, and the microphone, and all of that sits on top of my Peak Design travel tripod. This tripod is pretty lightweight. I mean, nothing crazy, but what makes it a great travel tripod is just how quick it is to operate. The ball head, the quick release, the way the pieces fit really flush together. 
everything just seemed very thought out and streamlined. I pretty much always carry a DJI Air 2S for capturing aerial footage. I've had this drone since right around when it came out and I have no gripes with it. It's small, compact, easy to set up and operate, and gets great footage. I think we get a little too caught up in the flashy specs of the newest drone and kind of glaze over the fact that this is a flying camera. That's insane. A drone is a great tool for a run and gun travel shoot. It's a quick, easy way to capture some incredible footage of a wide landscape and add some variety and production value to the footage you're coming home with. Because these are run and gun travel shoots, I don't carry around much of anything in the way of lighting, but I do keep a LumCube Panel Pro in my bag. It's a really easy light to just hide inside of a vehicle or a window to add a little pop of interest into a scene. It's really small, it has great battery life, you can set it to any color you want to. It's just a great option for this kind of filmmaking. Most of the time I also carry around an action camera, specifically the DJI Action 2. And I use this to capture sections of hikes that Whoa. are maybe a little too technical to oh capture God. with a larger rig or to capture just actions that are particularly interesting to see my point of view. It's really small, quick to use, and produces a great image for an action camera. So no complaints so far. I also carry around a little set of small rig ND filters for the Action 2, as well as a GoPro bite mount for getting those first person shots. For both my camera and my drone, I carry several extra batteries so I can shoot for at least a full day, usually more without having to worry about recharging anything. And for the record, I am not a battery elitist. Most of these are cheap off-brand batteries. I also have various pockets and pouches on my bag filled with random accessories that you just need from time to time, like Allen keys or lens cleaning cloths, various cords, power bricks. And I also carry around a decent amount of outdoor gear, like a headlamp, water filter, satellite phone, and more, depending on where I'm shooting. And that is the kit that I use for 95% of my work. Now, of course, there are exceptions. Like last week, I was in Iceland making a video about the Northern Lights. So we rented a Sony a7S III and I brought out my Sigma 20 millimeter f1.4, which is a lens that I almost never use for most of my shoots. And with the a7S III's incredible low light combined with the 20 mil 1.4, we were able to capture really clear, nice low light footage of the Aurora, nice wide angle, bright footage, that I just wouldn't have been able to get with one of the lenses I carry in my usual bag or one of the cameras that I carry in my usual camera bag. And as for the actual bag that I put all of this stuff into, I switch back and forth between two different camera bags depending on what I'm shooting. Most of the time I use this Moment Stroll Mountain Light camera bag. It's kind of like a hybrid backpacking bag and camera bag. A backpacking bag is way more comfortable than a regular camera bag. So this is ideal for like longer, more strenuous hikes. And it's also just set up for camping and backpacking rather than just photography. So I can fit a sleeping bag and a lot of food in this if I need to, which I can't usually do with my regular camera bag. Yeah, I just haven't found anything else quite like this bag and it's great for certain kinds of outdoorsy shooting. But if I know that there's not gonna be much hiking on a shoot and I really just wanna focus on having the gear accessible, then I'll switch over to my Low Pro 450 AW2. This is just like a standard large camera bag. It's got a ton of space inside and a lot of different dividers and compartments to fit all of my gear into. Regardless of which bag I'm using, I attach this Peak Design camera clip to one of the straps so that I can keep my camera on the outside of the bag whenever I'm hiking and shooting. I wanna make it abundantly clear that I'm not making blanket recommendations about any of these tools. The gear that's right for you is completely dependent on what you want to do with it and the films that you want to create. But I hope that seeing the tools that I choose to use for my own work can help you to pick out your own. That being said, that is all I have for you in this video. I hope you've learned something new or enjoyed this one. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV for more videos just like this one. We have an entire series of videos that I've been putting together here on Adorama TV, so I would recommend those ones, maybe particularly some videos we did about choosing the right camera and lenses for you. Seems like a good follow-up to this video if you're in the market for a new camera or lens. 
but they also have thousands of other videos. So subscribe to them for more videos just like this one, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.